Hi, I'm John from the Christian Century, and I'm joined today by one of our writers, Hannah Wilson Black, who has written a piece for us recently about evangelical purity culture in online content creation spaces, stuff that I'm really interested in, I'm excited to talk about. Uh, but before we dive into the article, um, Hannah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm Hannah. Um, I'm actually a senior in college out at the University of Chicago, um, where I study creative writing um, and environmental studies. And I'm originally from uh, Virginia. I actually grew up, I'm the daughter of a PCUSA pastor. Um, so sh shout out to the <laughs> shout out to PCUSA. Um, yeah, my, so my mom's a pastor um, and my dad uh, works in sort of relig like the intersection of religion and politics um, in DC. And so, yeah, I definitely, I'd like to joke that I grew up um, essentially eating dinner and my parents were usually like discussing, you know, um, Martin Buber or something. So, so I definitely uh, swim, swim in this kind of water, although I was not um, raised evangelical myself. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I finally uh, took to writing about some of this stuff. Very cool. Very. It sounds like your childhood dinners growing up a little, maybe a little more heady than than for most of us, but uh, that's very cool. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, okay. So in the beginning of the article, you you talk about a rabbit hole you kind of fell down of online content on on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, just videos that are posted online by evangelical couples. And I'm guessing most of our readers have not watched these videos or videos like them. So could you tell us a little more, like? What is in these videos? What are they about? What were you seeing and hearing as you watched this content? Yeah, so if anyone has ever has ever watched like a series of YouTube videos um, or particularly vlogs, that's kind of what these are. Vlogs is like it's video blogs. Um, so basically a typical vlog is usually somebody, one person, maybe two people, talking about their lives, talking about their day, doing a specific topic. A lot of basically online personalities will do these videos that are themed around a certain topic, or they'll do Q and A's where they have perhaps an account on social media and they ask listeners to write in questions. And so there's some kind of typical, um, there are a couple of kind of typical formats they might do the videos in. It'll be, you know, a Q and A about Christian dating, or it will be, you know, our marriage story. Um, and so, the titles of the videos and the content, like anything on on the internet where somebody wants views, the titles of these videos tend to be a little bit uh, what we call clickbaity, meaning that they say something like, um, <laughs> "The videos." I mean, they're like any other they're like secular content creators in the sense that a secular content creator might have a video that's like i got robbed at the mall you know three question marks and then the thumbnails them going um you know it's something very dramatic and then for the christian vloggers that's just like we almost got divorced like and so it's sort of like um they're running with very similar um kind of tried and true ways to get views it's just that the content is is ostensibly um Christian and so generally it's like two people on a couch in kind of soft lighting um just discussing a topic the videos are not necessarily like most vlogs they're not necessarily scripted but certainly they're heavily edited and you can imagine that they probably behind the scenes have maybe um slides or notes or a piece of paper where they are kind of um ordering what they're saying and who's talking about what and so they're meant to be very entertaining again the clickbait titles are usually meant to give you the sense that they're going to disclose some kind of secret information to you so that's pretty much what they do with the couples they generally kind of go back and forth um about a particular topic like maybe the topic is uh things christian girls are too afraid to ask guys or whatever and so you know, the guy and the couple will answer questions about like, does height matter? Or like, what's the first thing um, that you notice when you meet a woman? Or like, should, uh, I don't know, like, it'll be stuff about dating boundaries, or like, should Christians, should Christians watch porn? Should Christians go on dating apps? Um, 
Yeah, so they, it's like similar to pretty much any other online online influencer. It's just that the content itself is different, but they're using the same like the lighting and the hairstyles and the clothing. It all looks very modern and very yeah, very twenty twenty three. Yeah, sure. you, you're giving me flashbacks to so many youth group meetings I went to um, as a teen or a kid, um, just in video form. Um, you mentioned in the article that one of the common topics in a lot of these vlog um, channels is sex i'm like what's the message what's the basic message yeah. that these conservative christian couples are are telling to people online about sex it's really that um if you if you are not having married sex you're not having real sex and or you're not having sanctioned sex i, I emphasize the real part because that's something that that tyan and kyle who are some of the bloggers i talked about they actually say this they say you know, because they're born again virgins, they emphasize like we've had sex before with other people, but that was not real. We were not actually experiencing the fullness of sex as God intends it. So really it's like, they're, they're essentially, and I, I use this word in a very literal sense, they're gatekeeping uh, what they promise sex actually should be behind marriage. That's kind of the I would say that's the primary thing is that they are they're saying that there's something they're promising to you that if you could only experience it that well the catch is really they're telling you this thing this the married sex is so different and so holy it's also something that you will never know unless you actually do that in other words it's not like um they're not saying you know we it's not like a vlogger saying I went on a cruise here's a vlog of my cruise. You don't have to go on a cruise, but it looks nice. And like, you get to kind of vicariously experience the cruise. They're saying, you don't, you're never going to know the the fullness of this. You're never going to experience the fullness of life, really, unless you do what we're doing. And to Kyan and Kyle's credit, like, because they're born again virgins, their message is for everyone because their idea, the idea is that you can always make the decision to start again um and so i think that they perhaps the thing about the these vloggers is not that they're saying you can't come on my channel if you're not a virgin or like my channel's not for you what they're saying and perhaps this is even more insidious in a way is like you your whole life up until now you've messed up but you could always start tomorrow um yeah which is interesting i mean it's it's like wiping the slate it's like whatever happened in the past was not real really so we're gonna like wipe the slate and start again i think the second main thing that they're saying is that you really have to monitor yourself at one point in one video kyle says um he says something like even your he says your thoughts are as dangerous as your actions which is just a bizarre thing to say like I would not agree with that in general um you know I can have thoughts about wanting to like steal my roommate's pasta out of the fridge but I'm not it's not as bad as doing it um but that's like the second thing is that I'm is sure your the, roommate would you know, agree yeah yeah I for sure I think the there's a real emphasis on monitoring yourself and the like degree there's a kind of obsession I think with the degree of bad that things are for sure. Yeah. So in, in the article, you described one of these couples. Um, and I think it was a really good way to describe this entire genre or this entire phenomenon. You described them as almost genuine. And I'm just wondering if you could unpack that a little more just uh, broadly for the entire kind of movement of this, this kind of video content. What, it, what do you mean by almost genuine? Yeah. I, re regardless of the fact that they're, making money off these videos the videos generally are monetized like in some cases they're selling you know they have a website perhaps where they're selling like sweatshirts that say you know fearfully and wonderfully made um or something of the kind and so they're generally making money off of these videos in some cases this is their main source of income um but despite that and despite that they have the incentive to you know perhaps like i don't know make things up or to um put a kind of sheen on it i really think that for the most part and what makes them successful is that I think that they believe most the vast majority of what they're saying I mean I, I don't think that they're lying to the camera I think it's like 
they are being certainly I think they edit and certainly I think that if one of them expresses a kind of hesitation about these ideas I have no doubt that that might hit the cutting room floor um or you know or if they were to get into an argument in the middle of a video I think they would probably cut that um if they if they were not a united front on something because I think that is incredibly important uh it's important for anyone who is a couple online you do not want to be disagreeing with each other during a video where you're both trying to so there's a lot of like yeah babe like yeah no like yes I, I mean it's very tempting to fully believe all of it because especially like the men will like be very sweet and encouraging in a kind of like 21st century feminist hoorah like thing you know where they'll be like oh my they'll be like louder for the people in the back babe you know um and so I think that it's you know not that that they are um I think that they believe what they're saying I say almost genuine because everything that they do is filtered through the fact that they have an audience and I don't think you can ever be I'm not sure you can be fully genuine with an audience uh and I think that they have certainly an incentive to not waver on their opinions about certain things um partly because that's just not good entertainment like nobody really <laughs> no one <laughs> no one really wants to watch like a one hour long nuanced video essay where two people have some disagreements about a topic uh, I don't think that that's really what YouTube is pr is promoting um and so I think that there's all the power of what they're saying is that most of it, I think, is fully something they believe. And it's just it's believable enough. But you know that you will never actually be exposed to the minutia of their lives. They're, and you can actually tell not to like fully psychoanalyze these people, but you can certainly tell in videos, especially when the woman brings up something that's like, oh we did maybe not agree to talk about that you can definitely see a sort of dagger eyes like oh you're going to talk about that argument we had in costco a month ago because i was not planning to mention that in this video right. um and so you can definitely tell when there's tension but it's not fully explored it's generally cut off like maybe the guy makes a remark like aha we don't have to tell people about that and then it like cuts to the next topic so yeah. there's clearly tension and like some sometimes like pain and disagreement that just isn't something that they get into um and yeah they're they're making money off of it so i would absolutely take what i would take anything that anyone's producing on the internet for money with a grain of salt um mm -hmm. but certainly people who have a kind of vested interest in maintaining like a united ideological front yeah well this youtube channel is not monetized so we're just <laughs> all genuine here um <laughs> okay so so finally i think one of the big takeaways from your article is that there are plenty of teens out there raised christian who have really serious questions um, about sex and sexual ethics and if they want guidance or they want content informed by faith their options are basically bigotry and shame from the conservative content creators mm -hmm. and just absolute utter silence on all sex related topics from like the liberal progressive parts mm -hmm. of the church. Mm -hmm. And so it was a little bit heartbreaking as I read your article to, to realize that, that that is pretty much it has been my experience as well. Um, why do you think the, the more liberal denominations or parts of the church have tended to remain so silent on questions and issues of sexuality. Yeah, I mean, I think, and the the difficult thing is that I think it comes from a, somewhat from a place of good intentions. I think that I can understand why, as the pastor of a mainline church, you don't want to walk into youth group and say, like, today we're talking about what I think you should do with your body, which is... I think there is a lot of hesitation around getting adults in a room with teenagers and like the pressure to proclaim something because there's a certain straightforwardness to having, you know, a youth group discussion about how we shouldn't 
you know, lie to people, but it's difficult. You can, you can say like, yeah, we should generally not lie to people. It's like, yeah, the Bible says we shouldn't lie to people. Maybe we shouldn't do that. It's generally bad. It has bad outcomes. And like, you can probably feel comfortable saying that to a group of teenagers, but I think there's perhaps what's intimidating about talking about sex is that you would feel as a religious a figure religious authority that you have to have an answer for like yeah well on the fourth date you do such and such like I think that there is an idea that it will kind of just devolve into chaos if you don't give people a line in the sand or a kind of clear opinion about something um and yeah like if you start talking about that kind of stuff you it gives the adult in the room a lot of power it also, you know, I, I'm sure I know that that in evangelical circles, people are no stranger to adults, you know, even abusing teenagers through that medium of like, I'm a trusted source of information about sex, um, you know, therefore I'm I'm very I'm safe, which, you know, obviously you, you should not necessarily um, kind of. Yeah, you, you don't want to lure anybody into that. However, I in my experience, I think that letting people, letting, you know, young people discuss it among themselves can be really helpful. It is, it, like, it's deeply awkward. I won't deny that, but I think it becomes less awkward with time. Um, and I think as soon as one person is willing to bring it up, especially if there's, like, a discussion time that's kind of set aside for it, like, I think that it's, it's you know, it's a topic where you can say, you know, what do you, what do you think? Um, and in terms of like where certainly like discussion about it has been helpful for me, I think on college campuses where there are progressive Christian groups, and I'm lucky enough to be on a college campus where there are multiple you know, progressive Christian groups that um, have students involved in them that's been a good space to be able to talk about some of the stuff even bringing in a speaker um can be really great um yeah as in, in the article I kind of plug um I, I plug a couple of different writers like Nadia Boltzweber um and Romney Romney McClendigan I have her her book right here and I think that I think that something that's important to also remember is that none of these people as well researched as their work is like nobody kind of has the final word on this except for you um so it's like uh, I think that it's really important to inform yourself about all these different viewpoints but it's certainly you know I may be looking for answers on this topic and I may find you know a certain author's interpretation and analysis and their ethic like I might find that more convincing than another's and like I guess yeah I think it's really important to have a lot of different options because I think that fundamentally what's flawed about the what's flawed about the YouTubers is that they're often saying listen at the end of the day this is the option this is the way um and they're generally not pointing you to like a lot of other new, you know, nuanced discussions. They're generally not saying, "Oh, you know, for another viewpoint on this, check out this, this, and this." It's like, well, no, we have to admit that at the end of the day, we're the ones on the right path. Um, and I certainly think that there are other content creators out there who are progressive Christians. There's not, I have not run into as many of them, or um, I haven't run into couples really who do the same kind of thing in the same kind of numbers. Um, but certainly, like uh, God is Gray is an account that I've heard good things about, um, where people are willing to have nuanced discussions about this that allow for people having different sort of paths. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy to talk about. It's certainly, yeah, I think that people are just worried that they have to have a sort of pedantic line that they need to give to other people because people want clarity. I mean, the whole article mm -hmm. really is about how clarity feels so um, it's, it's like such a, a drug really. And like mm -hmm. not having clarity feels so bad. But the thing about that is that most people don't have that. And so I think discussion yeah. is really the only way that you realize that your 
not alone and it actually doesn't have to be painful to kind of be in the dark because everybody's in the dark. Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting part of the article where you were saying, look, we can bash these videos all we want but there's actually there's something about them that 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 has appeal i mean that that clarity that sense of certainty um well yeah look i i'm sure we could talk uh forever about this i think you've given some really good thoughts for, particularly if there are some younger folks who watch this our conversation or some parents of younger folks some youth group leaders some college ministry leaders so thank you for for sharing your insights um on this yeah of course um Anyone out there who hasn't read the article yet, there will be a link below in the video description. There will also be a link down there for Hannah's website where you can find her other writings. She usually writes about science, so you can find some cool science-related articles. Um, thank you so much for chatting today, Hannah. Yeah, thank you.